Hello. You may have noticed that in this part of the tutorial, I have added these three colors right below the Trainiacs logo. Now, this is the color palette for Swift Rail. Um, you can add your own color palette if you like. I grabbed one from here and I just changed the green from there to this blue, which I already had saved on a Roblox train. And I just copied the color code from there onto here. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting that ES40, uh, ES44AC into a scheme very similar to this one. We're going to be painting it into this R4 so you can see it's plus eco-friendly because it's in a different scheme. Now, since I have reopened paint.net, I'm going to have to set this back to alias rendering. And I'm going to do that. And then we're going to go to the magic wand. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of the white bit so we can paint under it. Because we're going to add layers to this eventually. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go up here to flood mode. Turn that to global. And we're just click on the white. Now you notice it's going to select um, a lot of things. It's going to select all of the white. But you can see it's also selected some black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test delete this here. Let me see here. Okay. See how it got rid of the blue and the silver too? We can turn the tolerance up or down based on uh, what we need to get rid of and what not to. So I'm just going to... You might have to reselect it. From time to time, I'm just going to do half tolerance, which is 25% because that's half of 50. And we're going to see if this works. Oh, you might have to turn it back down. You can see sometimes it will uh, change. Now, it doesn't usually play with me on 136. Uh, usually it just goes, but I guess in this case we're having some issues. So what I'm just simply going to do is I'm going to just refill these spots. And then make sure you turn the flood mode back into contiguous so it doesn't fill everything up. And we're just going to go around looking for... Uh, problems and then once we're done with that we will move on so I'll cut straight up to when we're ready okay now we are ready to begin painting the locomotive so firstly we must uh, make some changes to the actual structure of the image so I'm just gonna rename this to main and I'm gonna make another layer on top of that, name it number boards, like so. Next, I'm actually going to recolor this because uh, the white in here got lost. So I'm just going to select everything. Well, except for that. Oh, there we go. I, I also put some color down here. I guess they don't need that anymore because it's... Um, Uh, already up there. We're going to merge that back down. Now I'm going to make a layer under that. I'm just going to name it FRA stuff. This one is going to be where you put your reflectors and uh, some tags and other things like that. We're not going to include stickers here because I don't do those. Like I said in part one, some people do and and that's fine, whatever you want to do is whatever you want to do. Then we're going to make another layer, move that below that, and this is going to be our paint. And I'm going to add a layer actually above that. Uh, I'm going to title it text slash graphics. And boom, your locomotive is now structured. Now we can get straight to painting. So firstly, we have some things we need to do in the actual main layer. So uh, basically, we need to paint some things. 
such that uh, they cannot be um, painted over. So we're just gonna fill this in. We'll, we'll fill that in later, but uh, just gonna fill in a couple of things here before we get going. We're gonna do the handrails uh, manually later. I'm just wait on that. Now I have a reference here that I'm using for this. Um, you can use my video as a reference and actually I will put the uh, link to this um, drawing once it's done down in the description of this video so you can actually have a look at it yourself or just copy it and say that you made it I don't care um, but I'm just gonna keep doing this double checking stuff and I know these are two different locomotives but uh, we're gonna be basing one paint scheme off of the other now we have this uh, lightning bolt here that I also have on a different uh, locomotive here actually uh, the one on here is just a upscaled version of this one um, and we'll, we'll see about rescaling this one. I think I'm going to do that, actually. We're going to put that under graphics. You can see, obviously, this is too big. Um, uh, drag it up here. You see, this is obviously uh, far too big. We're probably going to end up rescaling in fact I might try using the 155 version of this just to see how it looks I mean it is a tad small I guess mm. we'll try uh, using that later now there is a way to flip this here um, it's in uh, it is part of the plug-in here. Well, let me uh, do that. That'd be great. There we go. So and you can do this here too, but it's going to flip the entire layer and I don't feel like moving it. So I'm just going to hide this for now because um, we're not going to be using it for a bit. So let's get painting. Um, let's see, I, I will worry about some of the handrails later. This is just a, a quick demonstration. So, we're going to click on the paint layer, make sure we're painting on that paint layer, and we're just going to select the everything pretty much below the running board. Now, it might look uneven in some parts, but uh, that is okay because it'll come back now it was the wrong color there we go and this will help to expose any uh, potential other uh, issues with the locomotive now you see if i do that it'll repaint the rest of the locomotive we don't want to do that uh so yeah and, and now we're going to draw our oh actually first let me do this here we go that's what i was uh, talking about earlier in fact let's paint some of the uh, roof elements here so I'm just going to highlight everything that's up here and then we're basically just going to paint it you know, fill them and then uh, now we are going to paint this I'm just going to make it white because the nose on these is white. And the front and back. And we are also uh, going to do the same thing for the front. Except the front is a bit different because we have a line to worry about. Now we're going to draw that line. And uh, I, have, I actually have a document that I made for this. And that's, uh, you can do this uh, for your 
uh, paint scheme if you want to, but this is just instructions because I am not going to remember. So uh, it's 150 pixels across at 135 degree angle. So and I base it off of the corner of the window here. Um, you can base it off yours off of whatever you want, but it is what it is. So we're just going to click O and you can see this comes up. We're going to change this to 150 as outlined in the text file. And make sure this is uh, aliased. And now we're going to click, and you can see it's smooth. We're, we're going to hold down the shift key, and we're going to keep changing it until it gets to 135. Now, the as you can see, this line is much too thick. This is because I, this is for 118 and not uh, 136. So we will be... Uh, trying to mess around with the thickness of the line here just to see if we can get it correct. Now it should be just about there. Seems to be the case. Let's move it over a little, like one pixel, maybe. Maybe another one. Here we go. Actually, I might decrease this by five pixels. Okay, yeah, that seems just about good. Which is about the same distance covering the shade here. And it is a bit wider. And I'm hoping for, so I think I'll lower it down to 75. There. Whoops. That's why we have undo key. Okay, I think our line is good. Now, I, I drew it so that um, it's going all the way through because we're going to just fill the entire cab as white. And that will make our job easier. So just F and then boom, you just bucket the whole thing right there. Um, now we're going to need to repaint this because it got covered. There we go. And boom, now we have that part of the locomotive done. Now literally all we need to do for the rest of it is just go back into the main, click K, and then click on the blue. And then I'll click on that so you can see the color. And then go back over here boom literally your base locomotive is now painted it is truly that easy um now it takes a bit of time to set up and get going and actually i did miss one thing here let me paint this gray not like it takes much time anyway it's literally like one click or two and uh yeah, there we go. Now we're going to be doing the uh, reflectors and stuff. Uh, this iteration of the paint scheme uses a much simpler reflector than the others. It uses this white line here. And essentially we're going to put down the letters first. So let's see, this is how many pixels? 15. And it's how many pixels from the actual top? six okay so we're gonna try to find the middle here and then we're gonna uh type in the letter f here i use the text key um now i'm gonna set this to just, uh aerial font don't need anything special for this i'm just gonna put it down to the uh, minimum size. Actually, on second thought, I might do a regular aerial. And you can see we now have our letter that needs to be moved up quite a bit. There we go. 
Now we're going to do the same thing for the other side, except we're going to type a R instead of an F. And boom. Now we have that. And uh, another thing it should be an FRA stuff. That's okay, though. Um, going to be filling this in. We can, uh, click M. And then you can just drag it and drag it and drag it all the way along until you get here. And then boom, there's your reflective white line that is FRA mandated. We're going to put in our reporting marks. Now I'm going to alias this here. It's not going to look that great, but... Um, And let me make that area black so we can see it better. That might actually be regular aerial. Hold on. Yeah, that's regular. Okay. I'm just double checking my fonts here. There you go. There's your reporting marks. And. Actually, yep, uh, now we need to do uh, this part here. So we're going to go back to main and we're just going to make sure this is aliased again and then just fill these lines in because they are supposed to be reflective. And I'm going to fill these in as well. It's it's okay to use references. Don't be afraid to. Don't get canceled for it or anything. Oh, some people might get mad at you, but who cares, right? Make those white, and then the rest of this is should be gray. Cool. We got that. Now there's no ditch lights back here, which is fine. Sometimes it's like that. Now we're gonna basically just fill these in because these are supposed to be gray on my paint scheme. So, and now once you've got that, you can literally just copy these and paste them into your desired location now not all of them are the same that's just the way that it is and so the ones that aren't the same uh, you'll just uh, be filling in manually we'll skip over that one and that one and that one okay so i'll just undo that and then control d to deselect that's the key bind and we'll be just filling that in. Oops. Actually, I'm going to copy this as well. And put it on here since these are all the same. Boom. Boom. And boom. And fill that in later to get here I'm gonna color these uh, the swift rail gray and then we're just gonna fill these in boom and then copy paste slide that in there it looks like we can't do that um now we don't need to fill those in because those are already gray. And boom, handrails are now done. There is quite literally one more step. Actually, there's a couple more until we are finished with this locomotive. So we're going to start off with the number boards. And we're going to just number this. So we'll literally just type in 4213. Now this is why they're separate layers, and um, 
we're gonna make that uh, al uh, anti aliased. And then we're basically just gonna do that. And actually, I'm gonna retype that. This is why I do 118 because you can see the pixels a lot easier. And just do the same thing there. Now here I don't have numbers, but that's because uh, they're on here, which is fine. All right, so I'll just do eight for this and we'll distort it a little bit. Boom. There's your number boards. Now we're gonna make the we're gonna uh, recheck the text and graphics, and uh, basically we're just going to uh, size this a little bit. Okay, so I tried to get it as good as I could, but some things just don't work the way that you want them to. Um, anyway. Now we're going to put down the the model of the locomotive here and obviously it's way too big. Um bump it down 6. We'll basically just do that. Maybe 4. Kind of difficult to get it. In the right place. Here. There we go. And now your numbering is complete. Uh, this one looks better because it doesn't have a lightning bolt because it's DC traction, not AC. But now we're gonna get our American flag. Now I have a image that has a bunch of things on it, uh, more than just American flags. But we're looking for one, and that is this one. And if I can find it. Gonna size it down. We're basically just gonna go down here, flip horizontal because the Canton is uh, the U.S. flag code says that Canton should always be leading the way. Um, and then we're just gonna put it there. And now I'm just gonna go in and manually color everything. So. Like so, and actually let me go back into the original image because uh, that's going to look better, <laughs> obviously. So I'm just not going to do that. Um, We go. There's your tab numbering, and we're actually gonna move this whole thing up a couple of pixels, just so it's kind of in the middle there. And then actually, I might move this up here. No, that didn't work. 
See, I was originally going to put it here, but I guess we'll just leave it there. Um, now we're going to add our Swift Rail text to the back. So I'll make sure we get the right colors here. I'm only going to type out half of it because it is, uh, it's not going to show the whole thing here. So, so I'm just going to do 10 and then. I'm going to do 5. And then we're going to gonna do that and then bring it down. Move it down a couple pixels. So it should be right about there as it is in the image, so. Make that ten. All right. Let's see about distorting this one first. So that seems to do better. And then we'll just kind of do that. Less too much. Okay, I'm going to just delete that. Oh, boom. Now there's just one more thing left to do, and that is to get the uh, text on the side. So let's see what that is. Let me text match this. Ninety six. Okay. Let's save that real quick. And then I think it's 12. Yep. Let's save that. There we go. Now obviously 96 is way too big so we're going to bring it down to like 48 that's about the same of course it's not going to be perfect now some say center it over the fuel tank I don't think that looks good so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do that And I'm going to add our registered symbol. And then we're going to bring it all the way down to 8. Kind of space them apart a bit. And move it closer. Mm 
can see how close it is. Actually, no, that's too low. Obviously, capital letters is going to be bigger than lowercase, so we're just going to size it down by two. Just to make it look better. And now we're going to move the entire thing. Just so you can see. That's what it looks like. Now, of course, it's going now. Not if I move it there. Let's move it as needed. And that looked about good. So, actually, this is the first locomotive fourth whip rail that's painted uh, directly in R4C. Uh, funnily enough, in 136 and not 118 like usual. So, there's your finished locomotive almost because we now have to do the top here. And I'm just going to copy the color from here. Let's already get that. And then I'm going to fill the. Oh, don't want to do that. Go to the main, disable aliasing, and then. Uh, we will just fill all this stuff in with the grayish black just to make it look good. There we go. Now we're just going to do some overviewing of the entire thing. Make sure there's nothing wrong with it. And I think we are good. So... What we're going to do is we are going to save this with control s now it's going to say uh save as pdn i usually save stuff as pdn then i overwrite it as png just because uh maybe i'll need to make changes to an individual layer so just replace and it's going to ask you uh do you want to flatten the image and we're just going to say yes and then boom it's flattened and then when you go into the file explorer and you open up the file and there it is so i hope you learned something from this video and please send your trainiacs creations into our discord server we have a dedicated media channel for such things you can uh label it with creations or if you're in any railroad rail fanning server or whatever and you post it there i'll be very happy to see it and good luck on your Trainiacs journey.